Greetings, fellow Seraphs, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of a Let's Play series playing Vintage Story. If you would like to skip the game's overview, the scenario setup, or character creation, please use YouTube chapters. Let me read a little blurb about Vintage Story. It's a voxel-based survival game, much like Minecraft, but with added engineering complexities, higher survival requirements, and a whole host of Eldritch Horrors, too. This series will be a mix of Let's Play and tutorial, and you live viewers will be able to vote on the priorities I work on. Uh, the game, I should add, is not sold on Steam, so you're not going to find it there. You're going to find it at VintageStory.at as an Alpha Tango or Itch.io. Uh, I'm going to be playing on the very standard, standard difficulty, but there's a few different types. So there is Standard, Exploration, Wilderness Survival, which is kind of like hardcore, Homo Sapiens, which is removing all of the sort of like magical or or past civilization. So it's sort of like standard plus, let's go with, and then creative. Uh, as far as world seed go, let's go call this Yoda's world. And I will add one thing, in my playtest of this game, because I've only been playing since like Monday. In my playtest of this game, I did have one world gen bugged out, but it's one of those things that I'll probably figure out very early on, whether it's bugged out or not. And I'm not gonna customize standard difficulty, just leave it totally as is. Right at the start, as you can see, way above my head, uh, I am going to be explaining some of the basic in-game elements, and then, subsequently, getting into the sort of just starting. So let me design my character. I want it to look uh, vaguely like me, although you can look very magical, what elf, you know, whatever. But I'm bald. Uh, let's go with uh, Sirius? And stubble. Oh yeah. Although I'm not quite bald, I was I haven't shaved my head in a while. Uh, we'll go with breeches. And then for voice type, I'll go with like a medium tuba. Sure. This is what I'm gonna look like. And then there is classes. I'm gonna be playing on commoner. I left this out of the details. I should have included it. Uh, but commoner is like no positive or negative traits. There's hunter, which is better range damage, but at the cost of melee damage or drop rate, mining speed, um, and a whole bunch of other ones. I don't really need to go over all of them, but uh, but it just gives you an idea that you can kind of customize your character a little bit, uh, and we'll confirm class. It's also worth mentioning that this game has an insane amount of uh, mods. Uh, so, you know you can really custom tailor your experience. Now, let me, before I even start playing, because the game is pretty hardcore and it's not going to be kind to me if I'm not paused, explain the UI. Uh, so you have the offhand slot where you can hold like a shield or a torch or something like that, lantern, etc. You have your hot bar, one through zero, you know, 10 spaces, and then you have backpack slots. Uh, in order to be able to carry things beyond your hotbar. And up in the top right, I have the minimap enabled, but that's optional. And you can go into the settings and change really any of your settings here. The game is very customizable to your specific desires. One thing I will add is be careful rebinding sneak and sprint as there is a lot of ramifications to doing that. I would definitely avoid it unless you know what you're doing. But yeah, tons of customizations here. So right at the start, right at the start, what we're gonna wanna do is make some basic tools and find a place to live. So in terms of basic tools, uh, almost any rock that you can pick up can be napped into like an ax or a saw, uh, not a saw, an ax or a knife or a spear tip or Something like that. Um, so it's rather easy to make your first basic tools with just like a stick and some rock napping. Uh, flint tools are slightly better than regular stone tools for the most part. So we're gonna be mostly looking for flint as it has a higher durability and slightly more damage. Um, and then in terms of place to live, there are different biomes in the game. The game is sort of laid out roughly like a globe where you have the polars, which are coal, you know, north and south pole, and then, you know, sort of a boreal forest. Uh, you spawn in a temperate area, and then there is also the tropics. 
And this matters because certain plants uh, and animals will exist in those biomes and not outside of those biomes. Uh, so we're in a temperate biome and we should take advantage of like temperate biome stuff. Um, all right. And then in terms of a place to live, what I would say in my limited experience, because I've only been really playing since Monday, is that um, somewhere that is sort of open, flat, and near resources, and especially water, is particularly nice. I, I like open so that you don't have to do a lot of land clearing if you want to build, because having to shovel out metric tons of dirt is kind of annoying. Um, also, open means that you have better sight lines so that you can see around you and uh, know if you're being encroached by enemies. And then uh, near water, for obvious reasons, because uh, farming is a lot easier near water. And then also, if you're ever, like, set yourself on fire or you need to, like, make things with water, like uh, tannins for leather tanning or brining for pickling food or whatever, uh, being near sources of water is also useful. All right. Uh, so horsetail, this plant, is sort of like one of the ingredients for your basic first aid poultices. Uh, so the fact that I spawned next to a bunch of horsetail is kind of nice. And I'm going to collect, I'm going to go with like eight of them. And then there's a, there's a lot of um, mushrooms, especially in uh, where I started right here. And the thing about the mushrooms is like some of them are good to eat. Some of them will kill you, right? If you're going to eat like a death cap, you're going to have a bad time. So there is um, in-game handbook. There's a survival guide here. And in the survival guide, you can look up like, oh, death cap. If you eat a death cap, uh, you lose 50 hit points, right? So uh, make sure that you know what you're eating when you stick it in your mouth, because you're going to have a really bad time if you don't. So the first tool I want to make is going to be just a knife. So in order to do that, let me demonstrate that again. I hold left shift to sort of crouch. Uh, much like in Minecraft, you can crouch and like walk at the edge of a voxel. Uh, but in this case, it allows me to place it down, and I can select the thing that I want to nab. So shovel, knife, hoe, axe, arrowheads, spear. I'm going to do a knife. Knife blade is a pretty useful tool. And then with the other flint I have in my hand, I'm going to nap a knife blade by getting rid of the voxels that I don't want. And then I end up with a flint knife blade. Take one of the sticks. Stick plus flint knife blade is a flint knife. Easy peasy. And this is going to allow me to collect... Uh, Things like horsetail faster, or alternatively, reeds. Really early on in the game, you're probably gonna want a lot of cattails, uh, as cattails are going to help you make rope and gonna help you make uh, hand baskets to be able to carry more items. They're going to help you make healing items, uh, just a little bit of everything. So, yes. Definitely a knife and then some some of that. So if I wanted to, I have nine horsetail and five cattails. If I wanted to, I could also make some healing poultices. Now, because I don't have, um, you know, I really don't have any in, like investment into the character so far. Like, I don't really need to heal. There's not a steep death penalty. Uh, so if I was to die, it wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm just going to plant this last horsetail down because I don't want it. Let's go on and continue collecting the cattails. Um, also, with a flint knife, you can also dig up the cattail roots. And this will give you the ability to have a cattail root, which you can either cook for emergency food or plant if you want to plant cattails near where you live. And really early on, if you're struggling finding uh, forageable berries or mushrooms and you don't know what mushrooms are safe to eat uh, and you're not very good at hunting, Going for a bunch of cattail roots is, like, acceptable. Ooh, we have a big underwater cave, don't we? Oh, man. How far down did this go? Uh, further than I want to dive. Holy moly. All right, let's not do that. I'm getting philosophic uh, vibes right now. So I'm collecting all these cattails, um, mostly for hand baskets, as... Currently, I don't have any extra inventory space, like, at all. And I'm going to plant... Oh, God, I hear a wolf. Don't, wolf, don't. Don't even, don't even. Wolves in this game are, like, 
Uh, let me raise the volume a little bit. They're, they're, don't mess around with, like, wolves or bears. They will absolutely, until, unless you have armor and, like, a decent weapon, they'll win so quickly you won't even know what kills you. Um, like, two bites, it'll happen in a second, and you'll be dead. And in this kind of forest, you do typically get a lot of wolves, so... All right, so handbook. Let's go with uh, how to make hand baskets. So hand basket is two, 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 two in a U shape of cattails. So one, two, one, two, three. And as you can see, I've added now uh, nine slots to my inventory and a few more cattails and I will have the full complement of storage for them. And that's what the knife's really good at, because the knife makes cutting cattails a little bit faster. And then after I have some basic storage, I'll go foraging for food and um, and try to find a decent place to live. Wolves will hunt you if you get close to them. It depends on your server settings, though. Uh, everything kind of depends on your server settings. Creatures can be set to be passive or aggressive, it totally depends on how you've set up your game. It's not an answer that is easily offered. And, and that's true of like almost all the game mechanics in this game. It's all going to be highly dependent on your server settings. Alright, let's try to find some more flint so I can make some other basic tools. I could, however, and I'll just demo that, pick up a granite stone, place down my flint that I have, go with like, let's get an axe head, and then grab the granite stone and nap the flint axe head with the granite stone. You just need like a stone in your hand to nap. It doesn't need to be the same type. So now I have an axe head and an axe. And axes are like okay at killing things. They're really, you're not gonna go toe to toe with like a wolf with an axe. Even though I'm dressed like a lumberjack, it's not gonna happen. Uh, but you will be able to like kill a bunny or something. Now, if I wanted to start forging mushrooms, what I could do is I could go like, hey, I hit H for the handbook, gold drop. Gold drop milk caps hurts me. So let's not eat those. And you can look up pretty much any anything in the game and it will tell you what it's used for, what it relates to. Um... Oh, well, I know this, that is edible. And we can always confirm, but yes, when eaten, it provides 80 uh, satiety and doesn't hurt me. Some mushrooms will actually even heal you when eaten, but early on, you can't really be picky about like where you're getting your calories. So if you're going to have to eat bush meat for hunting a bunch of bunnies, like that's just what has to happen. So I would like to get to some grasslands. So let's take a look at the map right now. We have some, like, uh, mountainous stuff. I would guess the best place for me to settle is going to be out this way. Um, there is a really good reason to be near gravel. Um, it really helps with uh, tech levels. So I'm going to mark down an area, call it go here, and I'm going to say pinned. And the reason I'm going to do pinned is when you pin something, it goes up in your minimap. So if, we, if you take a look at my minimap right now, uh, I'll make it deep maroon or whatever, purple. You can see that little dot, and it will sort of tell me the direction I have to move in order to get there. Almond mushroom. Almond mushrooms are safe to eat. And the map is huge. Yeah, it's like 100 million kilometers or something like that. Oh my lord. There is some ridiculous sized senotes or something. Holy cow. Bet I could drown a bear down there. Holes are pretty deep. I'm not used to... And on my starter world gen, I was... I did not see the, uh, the this type of lake happen. Where it's just... The, the depths. The subnautica depths. Are underwater bases possible? Uh, yeah, I think so. You would have to, like, build and then carve out a void. But uh, blocks are watertight as far as I know. So yeah, they should be possible. 
All right, let's continue collecting flint. I'm going to get rid of my granite stone. So this is sort of like a more grasslandy area. Uh, we've got some animals over there. Also, fire clay. So fire clay is going to be really, really important to technological development. So I am going to mark down this fire clay. Um, there's two types of clays, and fire clay is the better of the two types. So right-click on where I am, go to the mining pick, uh, and then call this fire clay. And then while I'm here, uh, I should probably like dig up a whole lot of it because I'm going to absolutely want to use it. So let's make a shovel for that. So I'm going to ma make a flint shovel head. You can collect clays and dirts by hand, but like it's faster to obviously use tools. There's the shovel head. How dare I slander your blue clay? Yeah, well, blue clay can't make fire bricks for uh, steel making or bloomeries. Uh, it can't make clay ovens for baking breads. So if I had to pick between blue clay or fire clay, it'd be fire clay every time. Now, blue clay has its place, obviously. You can make a lot of, you can make everything else out of blue clay, but uh, fire clay just edges out blue clay with uh, refactory bricks, fire bricks. And, and I'll explain this much, much, much later when it becomes relevant. Um, one thing I think that is important is that technological process progress in this game is like brutally difficult. Um, I can't even explain like how difficult it is to make steel. Like I would venture a guess that if you tried to speed run being naked to making your own steel, it's gonna take you like dozens of hours. Like no joke, no joke. It's so difficult. And and so so if you know the YouTube channel of like primitive technology, this is very much like primitive technology. You are going to get your butt kicked like 20 times over if you don't know what you're doing. All right, so I have a lot of fire clay, but I don't, I don't plan on living near here, and I might not find more fire clay uh, when moving over to where I want to live. Uh, things to look for when you just start out. That would be a really good list for you guys to know. So I would say you're going to want some basic forgeables. You're, you're going to want some basic food, um, obviously. Oh, God, that's a wolf. Oh, run, run, run. And this is why I have healing poultices. Swiggity swooty, it's coming after my booty. So, yeah, you're gonna want some basic tools. Ouch! Ah! Get away from me! Uh, you're gonna want some basic tools. You're also gonna want uh, to forage for food. So there's gonna be like berry bushes and uh, fruit trees and things like that that you'll be able to find stuff on. Um, bushes aren't always ripe. Uh, you can also forage for like root vegetables. You're gonna find carrots and turnips. Uh, one really, really important one. Whoa, let's not fall. Is gonna be flax. Uh, that's another wolf. What is with all these wolves? Uh, so making sure to get uh, flax and also grains would be nice. So spelt or rye, uh, something like that, you should be on the lookout for. In terms of like physical blocks, a big thing to look for is copper bits. So in order to make your first metal tools, which is a significant step of progress, uh, you need to be able to collect some copper. And there's, oh, go, go, that's a bear. What the hell, seed? Nightmare fuel! Come on, man! I just, I'm just trying to survive here. Uh, so looking for copper bits on the ground, hugely important. And also, if you find copper bits on the ground, it indicates that there's mineable copper um, underneath them. So mark it on the ground if, you, if and when you find it. Um, you can find tin bits which would then significantly jumpstart your way to getting bronze, uh, but they're very, very rare. Um, so I wouldn't rely on trying to find tin bits uh, in order to sort of skip Copper Age and jump straight to, to bronze is, is not so possible. Um, look for clay, like I said. Uh, fire clay is a little bit better than blue clay, but any clay will do. Really, uh, truly any clay will do. Fire clay only becomes uh, truly useful to you once you're starting to do a bloomery, which is like Iron Age level stuff, or um, 
doing um, uh, baking, which uh, you're probably not going to do really early on. Uh, so find food and find that stuff. Another one to look out for is um, a very special type of soil. So when you dig up soil, there's different soil types. There is This is like medium fertility soil. There's low fertility soil. And then there's like super fertility soil called um, called Terra Petra. And it's um, it, it looks like this, but the soil's black. Uh, and it's very rich, and it's going to be glorious for you to dig up and, uh, and farm upon. Because it will be very nutrient-rich and allow you to have really high yields for your, uh, for your, your farms. Um, any resources that you find that aren't just like dirt or stone, mark down for sure. So, you, oh, that's gonna hurt. Um, so if I found like, you know, quartz or copper or anything like that, like mark it down on your map. Um, I just found some cranberry bushes, so I grabbed the cranberries and I'm just munching on them as I'm trying to make my way to that, uh, that dark dot that I marked down. And any, any crops that you can find, like the carrots, turnips, spelt, flax, etc., dig those up because they will yield seeds. You can, if you want, if you're not ready to, like, start agriculture... What you can do is you can mark them on the map and then return to them once they're more ripe. Oh, there's a little fox. Foxes are uh, not particularly easy to kill when you're naked, but they won't actively hunt you. So, for instance, this is quartz in uh, in granite. I'm not going to mark this down because, like, quartz is not uncommon. You're going to find a lot of it. But if I found, like, native copper, uh, that would be a significant find. Oh, here's an underwater ruin with... What is that? Is that... Oh, it's just moss on it. So these ruins here um, will often have uh, breakable containers with stuff in them. So I'm just going around the ruins... Looking to see if I can't find a little clay vessel for me to Zelda Link smash. But no, I don't, I don't see one there. Looking for the loots. Yep, exactly. Is there aquatic predators? You know, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen one in my time playing. But uh, with that said... Predators can't just go in the water. So, you know, you, you you go in the water, wolves are just gonna follow, or bears are gonna follow you into the water and you're not gonna be safe. Um, the rams will ram you if you like get too close to them. So unless you intend to hunt them, don't go poke in them because that will hurt too. Sometimes it's worth digging around to find buried loot. Yeah, but I'm on a goal. Actually, let me update my priority here. Uh, find a place to live is what I'm currently working on. So the more open prairies are going to have, a, um, in my experience, like a lot fewer wolves. Like a biome like this. This is sort of swampy biome, but still it's going to have fewer wolves than the sort of denser biome that I was in before. Um, so the red is obviously my health, and then the green is my stamina, or satiety, like food. Um, the amount of hit points that you have is dependent upon your diet. Here, let me turn down this music a little bit. So if you incorporate meat, grains, dairy, berries, and vegetables into your diet, you're gonna have more hit points than if you're just relying on fruit alone. Do you need to sleep in this game? You do not but it helps. So here, for instance, is wild carrots, which I totally just didn't dig up right. Oops. Uh, I needed to let them mature further. Oh well. 
I'm a carrot smasher. Uh, so this is roughly where I indicated that I thought it might be a good place to live. So there's like a little spit of land connecting these two lake regions. Um, oh, there is actually an NPC over this way. I'll go check that out. Red wine cap. Let's look those up. They are tasty. Uh, we have blue clay here. I'll mark that down. Living next to a big deposit of blue clay is actually kind of nice. I'll make this like a blue color. Because blue clay is a good, is perfectly fine clay for most pottery. And I'm curious what kind of NPC this is. Hello, sir, or madame. They're a luxuries trader. I haven't seen you around before. Did you just wake up? Uh, I don't know what that means. Your kind have been popping up like daisies across the land. Don't know where you're from. Don't know what you're doing here. None of you seem keen on talking about it. I'm sorry. It. Uh, I'm not entirely sure myself. Got anything to trade, Rigby? So here is what Rigby has to trade and is willing to buy. And the um, the currency in this game is called Gears, which you can um, find underground dungeon diving off of enemies or through trade. So if I was to build a black currant bush, don't mind if I do. Yeah, I mean, right here seems okay. You know, lakeside. I think initially what I'll do is... Ooh, peat. Nice. I'm going to mark this down. So peat is, uh, is a fuel source that's pretty handy early on because it's cheap to dig up and um, it burns pretty good. So we have peat and clay nearby. Um, we do have the gravel fields just to the west, not too far away. The valley here has some fruit bushes, has an NPC, who the NPC has a bed if I want to sleep on it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to settle here. It's getting dark. So right now what I'm going to do is um, settle into a little cave. Very, very, very basic. Just stick myself in a cave and then we'll figure it out exactly where we want to live uh, later on. Because it's raining. And, um, and I'm not going to be able to have, like, lit fire out in the rain here. So, let's get inside. Oh, right into cracked granite. Alright, we'll have to go... Either I can excavate enough to have dirt to be able to build something, or... Yeah, this will work. Dirt Shack time, exactly. And I'll, I'll try to move out of the Dirt Shack uh, era quickly. I'm going to be polling you guys about what you actually want me to do um, shortly. The only other thing I want to make sure is that I have... It's, like, walkable to get in. And then I should mark it down that it's, like, my Dirt Shack. Okay. So let's uh, let's mark this down as, like, Dirt Shack home. So click um, home, and I'm going to call it dirt home, and I'm going to pin it so that I can always see it on my minimap. I'm also going to get rid of this arbitrary red mark here, because it was just like a direction for me to run into. So uh, next goal right now is to make a basic bed and some fire, which... Mostly is about me cutting this grass for the bed, and then um, and then cutting some trees down for firewood because I could do 
you know, a little bit of, uh, cooking on the fire. Basic cooking. Nothing special. So let's see. Open survival guide. Uh, I am looking for hay, and that is 2222. Okay. Oh, I ran out. That's fine. Let's get a little bit more hay. And then we're also going to want a little bit of hay and sticks for a fire starter, and then also some torches. So the game, uh, much like Minecraft, will have monsters that spawn, and monsters outside of special events that occur like once every 10 days or so, monsters mostly spawn um, dependent on light levels. So if we keep things lit well enough, they'll leave us alone. So here's a hay bed, which allows it to sleep seven hours a day. And then let's make some torches as well. One, two. And then let's make a fire starter. Done. I don't need two of them. It's useful to have two torches, uh, one in your offhand for a light level, and then one um, as backup. So if your first one gets extinguished, you're okay. So I'm going to stick some torches down on the walls here. Grab my little, uh, my little fire starter. And hold left shift, hold right mouse button, and light the torch on fire. Once you have fire lit, it's a lot easier to keep it lit. It's just really annoying to try to initially... There we go. Alright, so now that we have that torch, I'm going to punch it. And then I can hold the torch up to the other torch. Uh, I hear wolves, so no wolf. Now, uh, you don't get access to, like, door technology for quite a while. So the safest thing to do is to literally just, like dirt wall up your uh, your area because uh, oh great I have a window uh, with some heather in it and because I don't want to get eaten by wolves in my sleep this is my little dirt check welcome uh, put a little hay bed down we have a torch uh, so let's start a fire shall we so in order to start a fire, uh, grab the dry grass, hold left shift, right click, and it's a in progress fire pit. Uh, one thing I don't have is firewood, so I'm going to need to cut down some trees for that. So I'm going to put the um, the torch in my off hand there and uh, go chop a tree down, provided that the wolves out here like don't try to eat me. Otherwise, I'm going to run back in and wall myself up. I'm just making sure that there's, like, wolves immediately next to me. Which there doesn't seem to be. So, birch tree. There's not a lot of wood in this birch tree, but uh, it'll have to do. Oh, man, this birch tree was microscopic. Alright, so put the axe and the birch log. Gives a little firewood. It's really not a lot of firewood. Um, that's fine. I don't, I don't need a, I don't need a glorious glowing fire for a long time. I could have dug up that peat that I passed by. That would have been a good, uh, good thing to have as well, but oh well. All right. Squat by the fire. Right click a few, uh, a, all the firewood that I currently have. And then X switches your off hand to your main hand so I can hit X. Hold right click. And now I'm well on my way dying to carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, if, um, and I, I, I know this doesn't work, but if there is a, um, if there is a recipe, it will pop up above the fire pit. And I just realized that my, like, um, my UI here is going to be kind of in the way, isn't it? Because if I have this fixed, it, it gets overlaid. Okay, well, someone didn't do enough homework. Oh, hang on one sec. I'll fix it. Right now. Yoda, can you stop going crazy? It's really, really annoying. He is he's going absolute bonkers. Right, 
One second. Uh, I should pause the game while I fix the UI elements. No blanket for you. He's like, but dad, I had things to destroy. Alright, what if... Oh, switching to Yerokam. Actually, sorry. I can't let you do that right now. It does not let me fix my UI if you do that. So. Overwritten. Alright, there you go. Okay, so if there's a recipe, it will show up, but there isn't for these mushrooms. It doesn't matter, because I'm just going to eat them raw. Holding right click. Om nom nom. Now, I could go out there um, during nighttime, uh, but there's not a lot of reason to do it. So I'm just going to go to sleep right now, and then I'm going to have you guys vote on what I work on tomorrow. So here is the list. I can either do uh, work on food, which is like uh, farming, hunting, foraging, work on building a better shelter, work on my own uh, safety, like equipment and lighting, or prioritize technology, working towards uh, like entering the copper age. Really, all of it will be useful. And then while I'm in here, it looks like my shovel's about to break, so I'm going to make another shovel head. I'm going to make a spearhead, even though a flint spear is really not going to protect me from wolves. It will make me think I'm safe more than anything else. So here's a spear, a spare shovel. Um, and then another thing that I could work on is storage. So there's a bunch of different ways to store things. There is um, your own backpack storages, but then there's like um, storage vessels made of clay, which are really good for storing food. And then there's like chests or reed baskets. So there's wooden chests. I'm not going to be able to make wooden chests for a long time, but reed chests store eight items. They're they're placeable. You put them down. They, they can't be moved. Um, but storing eight items is kind of nice. So that's another thing that I can start working on is to add to storage. Uh, my nutrition's okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna open up, give myself a little window. Oh god, that is creepy. And sleep. Cheers, by the way. Is it possible to be attacked while sleeping? Yes, I believe it is. All right, world's my oyster. Uh, looking at the poll, it looks like a mix of safety and technology. So, I'm gonna say work on technology because I'll be safer once I have better gear. Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story, which originally streamed live on Twitch November 2nd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. But please keep in mind that I'm relatively new to the game, and I am playing at my own pace and don't really need endgame spoilers. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Seraphs. <laughs>